Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about creating glass text using layer styles. Now some people say layer effects, some people say layer styles. I use styles more than effects, but even Adobe use style and effect interchangeably. So either or. Right, here's this glass effect. It's very simple really. I've got three styles on, bevel and emboss, stroke and inner shadow. That's all it is, very simple. I've also got the fill opacity down at 0%. I've also used a stroke with a gradient fill on it. But let's get started. Let's try and recreate one of these effects from scratch. And I haven't got it in my head, you know, number by number. I just know the principle. Let's do it in front of you now. Right click on FX, go to clear layer style. So I'm back to the normal editable text. Double click on anything but the name or the thumbnail of the text layer. Bring up the layer style dialog box. Right, under blending options, take the fill opacity under advanced blending down to zero. Fill opacity will not affect any layer styles. We haven't got any layer styles yet, so everything on that layer has gone blank. But we're going to start with a stroke. So click on stroke, make sure that bit's highlighted because you can turn it on without actually being in the right place to edit it. You need to make sure that bit is highlighted. I'm going to reset to default so I've got no advantages. I know I want roughly 20 pixels. Notice it's destroying the A and the G there. I'm going to position the stroke on the outside. All this stays normal. Fill type, click down, choose gradient, go to the end of the gradient, click the down arrow, come to the cog here, pick neutral density, go OK. I'm going to pick neutral density 30. You can go higher, you can go lower. The way it works is like this. It's black across the whole color range, but here the opacity is at 30% and it ends at 0% here. So hence neutral density 30. Now gradients here can cause real problems. I can drag this gradient around as you can see it's changing on the screen. I've got the move symbol. I don't align it with the layer because I'm only worried about the text, but if you lose everything, just go reset alignment. Whilst I'm here, tick dither. Now, the reason I tick dither, it adds a bit of noise in to the gradient. I know the gradient is only going to happen on the actual stroke. So really, I'm being a bit fussy, but I just turn it on by default. So if you don't know what you're doing here, you can stay with linear 90 and a scale of 100. Just make sure you're using a neutral density of 30. You can go up to 50, but going too high, obviously I'll show you, if you go too high, it starts to you know end up like that. And we don't really want that. So 30 for me is absolutely fine. It works 99% of the time. So we got that. Let's go OK on that. So as I said, you can drag around and sort of move the grain around. Angle, I say keep it on 90. You can go to radial and do all these types of things. You can scale it as well. If you can imagine a radial gradient going out now, you're just making the actual target symbol, so to speak, bigger like that. And if it was um, a linear one, you're making the bands bigger that way. So you're scaling it across the layer. That'll do. I'm not too fussy. Don't spend too much time on this because as long as you've got the gradient bit right here, you know, the neutral 30, you'll be fine. Bevel and emboss, straight away we've got glass. Let's reset to default because I don't want any advantages. So it's remembered what I've done before. So reset to default, inner bevel, change it to stroke emboss. With the depth, look in this bit here, and start bringing up the depth until you like what you see. And don't go too far because you're not gaining anything. Around 400 is fine for me. Don't worry about direction just yet. Play around with size. And I roughly want to replicate what I had already. So in the stroke, so 20 pixels. It's not a one for one relationship, but I wouldn't go too above or too larger or below what the actual stroke is on, which is on 20 pixels. So I'm staying around 20, that'll be fine. 
Now, the direction is where the light's shining from. If the angle is like this, 162, if you shine it to down, it'll be coming from the bottom right, so to speak. You can move it around. So it depends on where the angle is, this up and down thing. So you can reverse it around ETC. But I'm just going to bring the angle around to about 140. It's on global light, and that means is if I go down to inner shadow and it's got global light ticked or drop shadow, they have that measurement together. So it keeps the same angle for uh, Bevelin and Boss, inner shadow and drop shadow. Right, anyway, I'm sort of moving away from where I should be. So don't fret too much, but I usually have the altitude above 30, but not too much above 60 because altitude is where the light's shining from. At zero degrees, it's shining there straight on. At 90, it's shining on the top, so it's a vertical thing. So you wouldn't want it on 90 because if you put it on 90, you're losing everything virtually you want. You're losing the sort of bevel. So around 40 is, is absolutely fine. So you can drag that little circle around. If you drag on the inside here, it's changing the altitude. If you bring it around the circle, you're changing the angle. So. And global light will only be relevant for the angle, not for the altitude. So that looks okay. Don't fret too much about it. What really makes the impact now is this gloss contour. And the contour is only being applied to the stroke. So it's putting a gloss on the stroke. Now it's on linear at the moment. If I click there, you can see what's happening. So linear is the light is not being disrupted across the surface of the bevel or emboss at all. So if I went to something like double ring here, you can see straight away or ring is doing something. In fact, double ring is doing a lot more than ring. How I know the names is if I click here, that's what a ring is. You can change it by doing all sorts of things as well if you want to, by moving these about and moving them across, etc., and make your own contours. That's very advanced. Alt or option key press, click on reset. That's okay. So I might stay... I felt I'm going to stay on double ring. You can click around, but I, I know the other ones are not that effective, but they do work. You know, it's entirely what effect you want, but I prefer this um, double ring. I'm going to stay on double ring. That would do me. Okay, that's looking fine. But the highlight mode, which is on screen, blend mode, and white, uh, this is only applying, of course, this blend mode to this layer, not any layers below it. I'm going to make it slightly... Uh, more opaque the white because it is glass so I'm going to try and bring that up quite high to about 70. I'm going to bring the shadow mode which is on multiply and black so if it's on multiply and black it will always make things darker and screen and white will always make things brighter so it ensures that the bevel is going to work so I'm going to bring that down so don't go right down you'll lose everything just to about maybe 30 odd that looks fine in fact just a tiny bit more Right, that is bevel and emboss dealt with. You know, it looks like glass already. Just the icing on the cake for me is using inner shadow. Now I'm going to reset to default again. So I'm going to start bringing that in. And I'm going to bring the choke down because what the choke does is stops the blurring of the inner shadow. If you mouse over it, I think it says something like reduce layer mask prior to blurring. Bit complex. If you bring it up like that, you'll lose the blurring. You know, the mask is blurred more when the choke's low. Size are going to bring it up a little bit more. I know it looks like I might be ruining things slightly here, but what I'm going to do is bring the opacity of the whole effect down. So it just gives it a little bit of extra oomph, so it makes it work. Now, I can put a bit of noise in. I can change the contour, but I don't recommend doing that because I've already got what I want. So coming here probably might help it for certain effects, but I'm going to stay on linear for the time being, so I won't confuse this. I've ticked anti alias and I'm going to tick it also on the bevelin and boss because you do often get pixelation and this will stop the pixelation. That's what anti-aliasing does. I can't see any. Maybe if I zoomed in, I could. I'm not going to zoom in. I'm just turning it on for a safety measure. But if I'm being really fussy, I will zoom in and check that it, it does need it. And if it doesn't need it, I won't have it ticked. So that's it, guys, really. So it's very straightforward. I'm going to leave a link down below or, or probably above to my website where you can download this uh, layer style. If you want to load it in, go to the styles panel, make sure you've got it showing under window and styles here. Click on the panel menu of the styles panel, go to load styles, find my style, which I have the file extension of .asl 
for Adobe Style. Load it in and you can use it. Loading is not the same as saving, but if you load it in, you can use it. If you want to, you can save it. Uh, when you do save things, the way I do stuff is I double click here, go to New Style, give it a name, include the layer effects, because obviously these are the layer effects or layer styles. So the name gets used interchangeably quite annoyingly. Include the layer blending options because I've got fill opacity of zero, so I do need that. Add it to my current li library, so I've put video test, go OK. So that's it, guys, really. It's quite straightforward. As I said, I will have a link down below. Thanks very much.